the 90s, Playmates Toys made the deepest line of Star Trek action figures in history. My name's Keith, and I'm a collector working towards owning all 284. I've been a Trek fan for almost 35 years, and most people are sick of me talking about it. But somehow I've convinced my old friend Mike to review them with me on... Look at my Star Trek toys! Hello again, and welcome to a very special new series on Look at My Star Trek Toys. Uh, as all of you know, I'm sure at this point, it has been announced that Playmates Toys has reacquired the license to make Star Trek action figures, and we're all excited about it. We're all abuzz. We all want to know what's going on with it, and uh, I don't have any information. But what I do have is a wish list because uh, I don't want them just to start making new toys. I have specific toys that I want them to make. So, uh, so Mike, I, I sat down with the idea of doing a top 10 figures that I want. Uh, how many do you think I, I came up with? Well, uh, since I do the uh, video editing, I know that you made 40. <laughs> and you also didn't mention we were counting down. So I actually spent my day today setting everything up uh, to count chronologically, and uh, we're doing it entirely backwards. So Who wants to do a count up? <laughs> You're just it, it like, all... okay, here we go. It's the new year. One, two, <laughs> three. <laughs> yeah, it all makes sense now. But here's the good thing. <laughs> See, I'm the opposite. I don't have any requests. Mm -hmm. I just like new stuff, new toys. I'm excited to open up, tear into the new packages, because I'm sure that you and I are going to be selected to be uh, reviewers, play testers. Well, I, mean, I just know it. I feel to, it right? inside. Yeah. <laughs> Uh, but until then, Overconfidence. since this is such a specific wish list, Keith, my favorite yeah. part of this podcast is that I sort of get to bow out and just click buttons and let you just live your best <laughs> life. So that's true. I get uh, to live the dream. So let me let me set out set a couple yeah. of of, uh, of preconditions. Okay. Here, because I don't want them just to make action figures. See, mm -hmm. Playmites, if we're going to do the wish list, if you're going to grant my true wishes, I want these to be in the four and a half inch scale, in the style of the original series. See, my dream here. Oh, let's see, there's no you there. It's it's very dark all of a sudden. That's weird. What happened okay. to me? All right. Ah, that's fine. My, my dream here is to complete the set that I have before. So, you hear me? I want these to be the 90s style so we can all put them on our bookshelves with all the rest of them. But, with no further ado, here are the top 10, I mean top 40, figures that I really, really want Playmates to make. And, starting with number 40, let's see who it is. Folks, it is... Is Things are moving slowly. Moving slowly. <laughs> it's Rain Robinson from Star Trek Voyager, The Future's End, Part 1 and Part 2. Uh, Mike, did you know that Sarah Silverman was on Star Trek? I didn't. I was just about to ask, is that Sarah Silverman? So, it sure uh, is. Thank you for answering. Yeah, so I mean, it was uh, it was a really fun two-parter. They went back to the to 1990s Los Angeles. Uh, lots of neon. It was uh, it was really fun, and I feel like that episode deserves a figure, don't you? Wouldn't you think? I think there might be some issues with Sarah Silverman and the licensing, but let's do it. Ah, uh, she probably signed it all the way to Paramount in the nineties. Anyway, so let's move on to number thirty-nine, and it is Car from hmm. Star Trek Voyager. Now, this is from the episode Initiations, and uh, those of you who are, I'm assuming, are watching this already know that this is a second character played by Aaron Eisenberg, who played Nog on Deep Space Nine, mm. who got to come in and have this amazing guest star as a separate character on uh, Star Trek Voyager. He does really tremendous work on it, and it's, it's a good episode for the first couple of uh, Star Trek Voyager seasons. And it's a good Chicote episode, so uh, I think it. I think Aaron Eisenberg deserves all the figures. We'll get there, but uh, I think it would be a good one to add to the collection. What do you think, Mike? Uh, you know, you never have enough nog is something I've been saying uh, basically since Christmas. So let's go with it. Okay, well, well done. Let's go to number thirty-eight, which is 
the movie era dress uniforms. We just did two episodes on the uh, the TV era dress uniforms, but they never made four and a half inch figures mm. of the movie era dress uniforms, which I think look really sharp, don't you think? Yeah, and, and for a line that is has been so specific with making sure we have the proper pips, making sure we have the uh, proper representation of the various uniform, why not do these? Yeah, I think they look great. I know that they, uh, I don't know if it was Playmates or another line did make figures of these uniforms, but let me be clear. I want them in four and a half inch scale in the 90s style, so it matches on my bookshelf. Okay, coming up next is number 37, another prominent guest star. Let's see if you can figure out who it is. It's Kuros from Think Tank from the episode on Star Trek Voyager. Do you know who that is? Is that a is this a a, a Star Trek Voyager episode about nothing? <laughs> it kind of is. It is of course Jason Alexander who uh, was a big Star Trek fan and wa really wanted to be on the show. So they wrote him an episode, and I thought it was pretty interesting. It's a good Seven of Nine episode. And uh, who doesn't want a, uh, a Jason Alexander at in Star Trek outfit uh, action figure? You know, Keith, this is also the action figure. If you wanted to go back in time and actually cast Jason Alexander as Willow, this would have been the action <laughs> figure. <laughs> That would be great, Jason yeah. Alexander. Yeah. Okay. All right. I'll I'll buy that. I'd watch that. Uh, watch that deep fake. Somebody get on that. <laughs> All right. Well, it's too exciting. Let's keep going. Number thirty six. Let's take a look. It's two Vix from the episode two Vix. Uh, any idea what this is, Mike? Um. No. I, I don't even <laughs> want to venture a guess as. <laughs> Uh, let's just, you tell me. <laughs> it's this uh, really interesting and dark episode in which the characters of Neelix and Tuvok in a transporter accident, because everyone likes a good transporter accident, are combined into a single person with his own personality and identity. And uh, so the episode basically is about the question of what do you do? Because in order to get uh, Tuvok and Neelix back, you have to kill this new separate individual. And uh, yeah, it's it finishes dark. Janeway makes some real tough decisions. Um, but I think it's a really uh, important and interesting episode as sad as it ends up being. You know, perhaps that is the case. But the whole time you were talking, all I could think about is how cool is that uniform? Uh, is it like silk? I just want to see that. Well, it it is the it, it's a really cool costume piece because they you know hired an actor and put the makeup to make him halfway between Tuvok and Neelix, but they did the same thing with the uniform. So that is a, a Starfleet uniform half and half what Neelix was wearing, which is a really fascinating uh, challenge to the costumers. Yeah, that's cool. Really cool. Uh, really. Uh, Interesting idea. So, number 35, here we go. It is... It's Kira as a Cardassian. Now, yeah, that's previously, cool. we did uh, an episode called Alien Incognito about the figures they made of our main cast pretending to be other species. And this is a great episode uh, where Kira is is a surgically altered to look like a Cardassian. Now, it's a really fascinating... It was like sort of like a spy intrigue. They tried to convince her that she was Cardassian the whole time, that she'd been a spy in her other life. Really cool episode, really cool look, and I think it'd be a cool figure. Yeah, that really does look cool. I'm uh, I'm all on board. And it's uh, the episode's called Second Skin, if you're counting at home. Here it is. Let's do number 34. Now, sometimes I cheat. Sometimes I don't just do individual mm. characters. I take a whole episode where the whole cast gets to dress up funny, and I want a I want a box set of the whole thing, including the Bond parody cast from Deep Space Nine, an episode called Our Man Bashir, 
where they're on the holodeck and they all basically play characters from 60s Bond uh, Bond films. And obviously, they don't say James Bond, but it's very clear what it is. And so they're all in these uh, cool retro Sean Connery era uh, outfits and some of their good guys and bad guys. And oh, it's really that's fun. that's cool. I'm and into that. uh yeah, it's 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 really cool. You get to see, uh, and I think the the story, the holodeck starts creating bad guys, and of course, like every time there's a holodeck episode, like the safeties go off and they can all die, and nobody knows what they are. But you have, um, you've got Worf in there and Kira in there, and it's really it's really fun. So I would love to have a box set of. So you don't the just want the one cast. package; you want the whole. I want the whole thing, because otherwise, if I did them individually, good lord, this would go on for like 90 figures. So I'm really saying I want 90 different figures. I'm just condensing it down to 40 because... All right, all right. Restraint. Okay, number 33, another great guest spot, and that is The Clown from the episode The Thaw from Star Trek Voyager. Do you know who that is, Mike? Oh, yes. Well before he was Ted Lasso, Jason Sudeikis was on Star Trek Voyager. Oh, wait, wait. Uh, I'm being told that's not Jason Sudeikis. No, no. Jason Sudeikis was like 12 when this episode came out. <laughs> no, this I don't know who that is, is. It is another SNL cast member. If you'd believe it, that's Michael McKeon. Oh, okay. From uh, SNL and uh, Better Call Saul and many, many other things. I saw him on Broadway in a Pinter play. Speaking of dark, Pinter. so this was I, I, a uh, I just met her. <laughs> this was a really interesting and dark and kind of weirdly disturbing episode of Voyager, where they they go into a uh, simulation, a simulated computer program. They had people who had to be uh, under uh, sort of like living in a computer program while their society rebuilt or whatever, and it went horribly wrong, and all of their fears manifested into this like horrible terrifying clown thing and uh i don't know it, it it was an episode i didn't like the first time i saw it but the more times i saw it i was like this is really dark and weird and interesting and uh and michael mckeon does an amazing performance and you know it's just weird looking i kind of want to figure right well you know i love a weird and you know i love color so uh this is right up my alley listen playmates give us the clown give us the clown and uh cirque du soleil was part of that episode too uh, all right, next up, number 32, continuing our countdown on your dial, it's Kivas Fajo from the Next Generation episode, The Most Toys, played, of course, by Saul Rubinek, who was a last-minute replacement. They were, had already begun filming uh, with another actor, and it didn't work out, and he came in at the last second and gave a really fascinating and interesting performance as a, a collector of unique items. And uh, who abducts data as a unique item to put in his collection. I love it. And uh, it's it's pretty cool. And you watch sort of data have to figure out how to escape and deal with his ethical programming. Like, do I kill somebody to survive? This, that, the other thing. There's also some cool 20th century stuff. And they're one of the things that he has that's super rare is an old baseball card. And I thought that was cool referencing something from our era in this episode. Uh, anyway, Saul Rubinek, great performance, interesting. And, you know, that's a cool figure, right? Totally. Let's get it. I want that costume. Ooh, I'm looking oh. forward to this next one. Okay, the last one of this episode, and this is number 31. Here it comes. It's from Star Trek Nemesis. It's Voiceroy, Ooh. who was the uh, our, our bad guy's henchman, lead henchman, played by, I'm not even going to make you guess, it's played by legendary actor Ron Perlman. Yeah. Who uh, is used to wearing lots of prosthetics as Hellboy and all the way back to uh, The Beast in the Beauty and the Beast television show in the 80s, if you remember that. Oh, I did not know uh, that, actually. Yeah. So, you know, the movie itself, people have a lot of feelings about, and it wasn't always great, but really cool uh, character design there for the Remans who were a sort of subspecies of the Romulans who were subjugated on a moon. And so they look uh, weird and scary. And Into it. who wouldn't want that figure, right? Totally. Totally want it. And, Can't wait. Okay. Well, if you want to find out what the next round, because we still have 
30 more of these that I really want. You're going to have to like and subscribe and watch the next video. Otherwise, we'll be back with our regular videos. Uh, Playmates, I know you're watching. I got a list. I'm checking it twice. Come on. Give me these toys. So, folks, am I wrong? Am I right? Is this a terrible idea? Do you have... Are like, no, I want this figure right in the comments below. Are they ranked too high? Are they ranked too low? What am I forgetting? Write us a note. We'll be happy to read. For the rest of you, we will be back for numbers 30 to 21. Coming up next on... Look at my Star Trek toys!